Uh, so I was in Lufkin, Texas, and a tornado hit out there. Um, so I had no idea that they had sirens there to warn you of these things. Um, but I remember we were advised to sit in our tubs <laughs> in case the tornado hit. Um, and so during that time, you know, there were semis flipped. You know, we saw trampolines and trees and then huge old trees that were being torn out from the ground with ease. Um, and then a lot of people don't understand. There's ice storms that hit Texas that are pretty bad. So um, here in Utah, we understand you know, there's snow, there's, you know, blizzards and whatnot. But because of the humidity, it plays a huge factor in there. It's bone chilling cold there. So um, and then you have the heat. You know, 105, 110 degrees there with 80%, 90% humidity. So, um, so you would, you know, you would shower and then go outside and it's like you took another shower, but in your own sweat. So, so though, you know, you're one, one extreme from the other. Oh, wildlife encounters. No. Um, but while I served in East Texas, there were some weird stuff we ate. Um, we had raccoons, squirrel. Uh, lizards, <laughs> geckos, um, and alligator, and frogs. So, so it's, you know, I you know we eat some weird stuff in my in my culture, but you know, squirrels. I'm like, mm, you know, I could I could say try it everything once, but I did like raccoon. Raccoon was really good. <laughs> so, so one of my favorite foods out there was brisket. You know, I'd never heard of that, um, but especially when they smoked it, you know, that was really good and then just anything that was barbecued out there. So, you know, I thought we had some good barbecue here, but out there, you know, we don't touch Texas in, in anything barbecue wise. So, but I would say brisket was probably my favorite. Uh, probably a crazy experience was in Texas, or was out in out East Texas um, while I was out there. Um, it's just uh, the, Texas there, you know, Texas people, they're very, you know, they love their guns and whatnot, so. Um, I think the craziest experience was that uh, my companion and I, we, we had been knocking for hours. And we had, we had been in this area where we knew we shouldn't have been, um, but we just wanted to finish a couple more doors. But yeah, you know, long story short, we, <laughs> some guy pulled out his shotgun on us and was just like, get off my yard, you know. And I said, we're just, we're just here to talk about Jesus, you know. We're, we want to talk about our religion. He's like, I don't need Jesus. I got my guns and I got my beer, you know. So I'm like, all right, you know, we'll just leave you alone. And I, you know, that's the first time I've ever been put, been put on gunpoint. But yeah, and then it showed me, you know, you need, really need to be careful while you're out there. And if the Spirit tells you to go home, you just need to go home. So <laughs> The most important thing that I've learned was that... Um, was that it's never ever about you and will never be about you. And, you know, my whole life, because I'm going through what I've gone through before my mission, it was always about me. It was like, you need to run faster, you need to jump higher, you need to catch, you need to have more touchdowns than the next person next to you. And it's, it was always about you, you, you. And then when I got on my mission, um, it wasn't ever about me. It was about these people, it was about my companion. And it was about our Father in Heaven and our Savior Jesus Christ. And although we're the ones who are doing the work, we're just a mouthpiece and we're just an instrument in the Lord's hands. And so coming home from my mission, I, I learned the value of, of never being selfish with anything that I had as far as talents, as far as being service to others. Um, there's always room for someone or there's always someone out there who's in need of help. And although you may be doing the work, it's, it's all in our Father's hands. He's the one that's providing it for us, you know. And if we have that opportunity, it's a blessing for us to do it, you know. And so that's one thing I learned. It, it's never about you, you know. And I understand there's, there's times where, you know, you do have your own things and you do do things on your own. And there, there are times where, you know, there's certain things that we've been given that it, it may be about you at the time. Um, but as far as this gospel is and how it works, you know, it's, it's never meant to be alone. You know, that's why we have the opportunity to go two by two on our missions. That's why here in this life we have the opportunity to get married. We have our opportunity to have children. You know, and if you, and if you so, so long as you're faithful to the gospel, you know, you'll always have other individuals there in your life. So you're, you're never, it's never meant to be alone, nor is it ever for you to do it alone. 
So that's the one thing I learned, one of the powerful life lessons. It's not about you, you know, so. If they get called to Dallas, <laughs> um, they just go out there with the, with the intent of wanting to learn. Um, I remember, I remember my patriarchal blessing, he said, you'll serve somewhere foreign. And, you know, Dallas, Texas, I'm like, that's oh, not nowhere foreign. Um, but, you know, when they talk about Southern hospitality and they talk about, you know, how loving people are in Texas, it truly is um, a place of where people care, you know, regardless of what religion you are, the people there are always willing to, 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 to you know, to give anything that they have to help you. Um, as, as far as advice is going to serve out there in Dallas, um, you really need to be open-minded and you really need to, to have an open heart and mind to anything that comes your way, um, whether it be for those who are not of our religion, uh, for those of you, for those who haven't ate anything foreign or eaten anything else other than, you know, the, the typical foods that we eat here. Um, and then most importantly of all, um, if you go out on your mission in Texas with the intent to love every individual that you go out there, um, six successful, um, having success on your mission, you know, will be, will, will be given to you. Um, so long as you dedicate and you and you give your heart out to people, you know, they'll love you regardless. So, oh my gosh, um, as far <laughs> so for those of you who are returning home, um, I would say the most important thing is first make sure that you're that you're ready for what the world has to offer. And then I know a lot of people say stay busy with school, you know, go out and date and all that. Um, I would say surround yourself with with people who can influence you, who can influence you for the good. Um, because I know out there there are a lot of returned missionaries who do who do come home and they fall away from the gospel. And you know, for me, that's that's one of the saddest things to see. You know, is to see those who have dedicated two years of their life to this gospel and then come home and then fall away um, because of certain decisions that they've made. Uh, so I would say surround yourself and then the advice that everyone gives us is to get married you know get married in just just look for a companion and date as much as possible so that you have an opportunity to see you know what's out there um, me I got married a year after my mission and you know a lot of people are like oh you're still young 22 years old getting married you know is that a typical thing you tell people do and I'm like well no <laughs> like but for me getting married at such a young age um, and that I finally realized why they asked this. And in my opinion, it's because struggling at such a young age with no finances, I didn't even know how to get a credit card, didn't know what a credit score was, how to get a loan from school. Um, I, didn't, I didn't struggle alone. I had my wife there to struggle with me and you know, kind of show me the ropes. Um, and I think that's why they, they ask you to get married um, in a good amount of time after your mission. It's because the earlier you do it, um, the more time you have to, to have more experiences with your companion. You know, so I didn't have to struggle alone. I, I don't have to eat alone. And I come home to a home-cooked meal instead of ramen and rice and barbecue sauce. So, <laughs> so yeah. So that would be my advice is to, you know, surround yourself with good people. And then in due time, you know, find yourself a spouse and get married. And then enjoy that blessing of it.